Hey guys, okay. Looks like we are live. Yep, okay, good thing. I uh, had some, for those of you that don't know, I had some troubles here a couple of weeks ago uh, with one of my lives and, and never could get it to work. And so now I panicked every time I <laughs> try to start it because I'd never had a problem before. So welcome everybody to this um, year-round gardening workshop and I'm excited to have you guys here. So this one is called the Growing Spinach in the Winter, Fall and Winter Workshop and uh, we're going to cover some good stuff in this one. So everybody let me know if uh, I am sounding okay and if you can see me okay. It looks like from, from what I'm watching that we are in good shape and, and everybody is responding. So Okay, as we're kind of waiting for people, we had about 30 people that were waiting and we had about 150 people on the, the list. And um, yes, spinach in the winter, for sure. Um, so uh, while we're waiting, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. So where are you from? What's your garden zone? How cold does it get there in the winter time? And uh, let's, let's kind of just see. So we've got people from Arkansas, 113. Whew. That's hotter than us, but we're over 100. We've been over 100 all week and, and looking like another week. So, um, yeah, that is crazy. Uh, who else do we have here? Um, Wisconsin. Awesome. I know it's cold there, for sure. So just so that you guys are aware, I live in Utah. Um, our garden zone is 6B. Um, so we have a pretty solid winter, not as cold as a lot of you, but uh, we're seeing Connecticut, Maryland, um, Missouri, Indiana, Philadelphia, South Carolina, another Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Delaware, Texas, Texas again, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, um, Northeast Texas, Rhode Island, awesome. All right, well, we're up to about 60 viewers, so I think we'll kind of get moving along here. Um, California, Texas again, Ohio, Illinois, Texas, 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 awesome. Okay, so those of you that are in Texas and those Zone 8 people, you guys are going to like this a lot because this, this is going to be uh, something that will really, really help you guys, but all of us will be able to do this. So, Okay, um, first off, I wanted to thank our sponsors. Let me turn myself off so you guys can see this. Honest Seed Company and Smart Pots are sponsoring this video and they have sponsored the prizes as well. So Honest Seed Company gave us three $25 gift certificates to give away and Smart Pots has given us two Smart Pots to give away. And we'll do that after um, we after we kind of finish the presentation. Make sure that you hang around. There is an opportunity for you guys to get a free course um, as well. And, and we're gonna talk quite a bit about the master the year-round gardening master course which is open and for sale right now there's a link down in the description you can click on to learn more about that but there's a I've got a, a couple of special offers for you uh, that are here today including a free course on succession planting so we'll talk a little bit more about that so here's what we're going to talk about today we're up to about 90 people so we'll, we'll really get rolling we're going to talk about how we can grow spinach through the winter months and for a lot of you depending on where you live you may be able to get as much as seven or eight months worth of harvest out of one planting of spinach. So let me give you our example. So we start our planting in August. We start harvesting in about um, first, first of October, middle of October, around there. We Obviously, we use some protection through the wintertime. We've, we've got cold frames and things like that. And we harvest from October to some years all the way up until May for that one planting of spinach, okay? And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna go through um, what we need to do to make that happen. Um, and we're gonna talk about when to plant. We're gonna talk about how much to plant. We're gonna talk about when you should be harvesting and we're gonna talk about how to protect your crops, okay? Now, really quick, um, just so that I, I always like to do this at the beginning so that, that people understand what we're going to be talking about. So this isn't for container gardens, okay? 
the stuff we're going to talk about could help you extend your container growing, but containers don't do well in the dead of winter because they freeze too quickly and too hard. So not really for container gardeners. I would recommend that you have a decent amount of space uh, dedicated to this. Um, for most of you, anybody below zone seven is probably going to be looking at wanting to have a hoop house or a cold frame. And this is really meant for those of us that have a cold winter. Um, and then just so you guys know, we are doing the launch of the, the year round gardening master course right now. And I am going to do an offer and a little sales pitch after we do the presentation. If that offends you, then this isn't the right <laughs> workshop for you. So uh, sometimes I get people get a little bit out of shape, but I'm gonna give you 25 minutes worth of free stuff and, and hopefully you guys will like it and maybe want to, to join this, this free course, okay? All right, so who am I? My name is Rick Stone, and I am the founder of the Gardening Academy and the principal author of the website, Our Stony Acres. I'm a master gardener, and, I, and we have been gardening for 23 plus years. I really need to change this slide. It's more like 25, 26 years now uh, that we have been gardening. And even before we had official gardens um, as a couple, you know, my wife and I, uh, we both gardened, our families both gardened as well. And so we have a lot of gardening experience under our belt and we are pretty passionate about it as well. We really like to garden and um, that's that's a big part of our lives, okay? So as I go through this presentation, just so that you guys know, um, I can't focus on teaching you and read the, the feed, okay? So if, if you guys could see my screen, there's the feed here and, and all your your questions and stuff come up. So just so you know, don't feel like you're being ignored. Uh, I, I will, um, will though kind of ignore you for a little bit. Um, my wife is upstairs and she is going to keep track of all the questions. She's gonna add them to a, a screen over here on my other screen. And, and then once I'm done with the presentation, we'll do the, the prizes and then we'll go through and answer all your questions. So kind of hold your questions to the end don't be offended if I don't catch your questions as we're kind of going through because I, I want to do the teaching part and then we'll uh, then we'll, we'll kind of go through and, and I'll take as much time as we need to to uh, answer your questions, okay? All right, so eight months of spinach harvest all the way through the winter. Absolutely, that can happen if you plant at the right time, if you protect from pests in the fall, if you plant a nice big bed and we're going to go through when to harvest, we're going to talk about row covers, hoop houses, and cold frames, and we're also going to talk about a few other crops as well that, um, that you can do this same thing with, okay? So this is kind of the direction that we are going in. Now, one thing that I'll point out, because I, I know that I saw some people here that are like in zone eight, um, you guys will have a, an overall easier time growing spinach in the wintertime but your harvest will also be shorter because you have less winter time. You have less cool weather, if that makes sense. So, so your planting dates will slide further, you know, like we're planting in August, you guys will probably be planting in late September. So you kind of just lose a little of that overall time because spinach needs some cooler weather to grow. So just, just be aware of that. But what we're gonna teach you here uh, will help, in, you know, even all the way up to zone eight. Um, will help you, but it's you, you guys in zones four, five, six, and seven are going to love this, okay? All right, so first off, let's talk about when we are going to be planting our spinach and other crops um, so that we can make this happen. For a fall harvest of these crops, we want to be planting them about six to eight weeks before your first frost. If you're not worried about fall harvest or if you want to do a separate bed that, that's meant for early spring harvest, then you're gonna hold off and you're gonna do that about four weeks before your first frost. And you can actually almost work it right up to the, the first frost date um, with those plantings as well because they're gonna overwinter and then they'll grow more in the spring. So let's use my garden as an example. Normally our first frost date lands right about October 1st. Occasionally we'll have one a little bit earlier than that. One time we had one on September 20th, but usually it's a bit later than that. It's usually more like the 15th of October. So I just kind of do an average and say it's the 1st of October is our planting or is our first frost date, okay? So I count back eight weeks from that and I start planting my spinach and other winter crops about August 1st, okay? Now, August 1st is still pretty warm. <laughs> um, we, we really are not quite into that 
um, cool down yet and so um, you do have to make sure that you baby these seedlings as you're as you're planting them you want that timing because we want to get full growth before the winter settles in because once once we round about mid to late September the the daylight is going to go way down and things are going to grow a lot slower and so it's important for you to get those plants growing at a full size and that's why we go the full eight weeks before your first frost because we want to make sure that we get them growing and, and doing really strong so um, so make sure that you, you you know you target those dates but you also have to really baby those plants and one of the big things that we have to look out for when we're planting uh, you know in late summer and early fall is there's usually a lot more pests around than than what we're used to with these type of crops in the spring so spinach and kale and collards and things like that are big targets for a lot of those chewing bugs and uh, so we need to make sure that we do some things to keep them safe to keep those crops safe one of the recommendations that I have for you is to use some light fabric row cover okay so we're not talking about the heavy-duty stuff that's meant to you know to keep your crops from freezing which we're going to talk about that here in a little bit but when we're talking about pests it's um, a good idea to to just look at um, those uh, lighter fabric row covers sorry my uh, my mom's calling <laughs> my phone was going off and distra distracted me there for a minute so we want to use those light fabric row covers and if you cover your plants with those it's still gonna let the Sun through it's still going to let the water through but it's gonna keep the bugs out another option that I've been seeing here lately that is another really good option is they they're they're now producing these really tightly woven pest or bug nets that you can put on hoops and cover your crops with as well the the idea here is though that we need to keep the aphids out the grasshoppers out the Japanese beetles you know whatever your pests are we want to keep them out of those crops and kind of protect them as we're going along um, so again this it, when we say light uh, it's it's not light like sunshine light it's it's light weight um, fabric row covers and so uh, you'll look like on Amazon or on the you know the gardening websites you're gonna be looking for uh, it'll say light fabric row cover and it will usually say um, like 90% light penetration and only will have like frost protection down to maybe one or two degrees okay that's light fabric row cover heavy fabric row cover is will have pest protection or sorry frost protection down to about six or eight degrees and that's a different thing that we're going to talk about here in a bit but to keep the pests out a light fabric row cover is really good for that okay all right the next thing that I want to encourage you to do is to plant a lot we want to make this worthwhile and so you need to plan a pretty good area um, for planting um, at least a four by eight foot bed uh, there's there's quite a bit of effort that needs to go into this and and <clears throat> I want it to be worth your while and if you want to be able to harvest all the way through the winter you have to have some volume there um, so so we want to grow and you can see let me turn myself off here so you can see this picture clearly um, you can see that that uh, I plant my spinach really close together and a lot of it uh, we pack it in there so that we get a big harvest and we have plenty of leaves to go throughout the winter with okay all right harvesting is going to start about eight to ten weeks after we have been planting okay so um, you the the nice thing about a, a, a you know a planting of spinach like is this is it's going to get be ready about the same time that your warm season crops start to disappear so the frost will have settled in you're gonna lose your tomatoes you're gonna lose your cucumbers and your zucchini and all that kind of stuff and then all of a sudden if you've done your timing correctly you will then have um, some other fresh veggies to to get out of your garden so usually your harvesting is gonna start eight to ten weeks after planting time um, for me that means about mid-october uh, is when we start harvesting those leaves and you want to there's kind of a strategy as you're going through and harvesting these plants 
you, you kind of want to look at them and you want to harvest the biggest leaves first kind of continually uh, because those are going to continue to grow especially in the fall and so get after those big leaves we, we want to make sure that the, the, the plants don't think about bolting or anything like that um, and then we, but we also want to make sure that we leave plenty of leaves for the dead of winter because we, there won't be a lot of growth during the winter time um, there, there will still be a little bit of growth but very little. Um, so here I'm talking about like December, January, February, those months, the growth will be really, really slow. So you want to make sure that you, you leave some for you to harvest during that time because that's the slowest growth, growth time. If you, and again, remember, we're just removing leaves. We're not removing entire plants. And then if we do that, then we're going to also have a big rush again in the spring. So once weather starts warming up in February and March, all of a sudden those plants are going to take off again and we're going to just have a ton of leaves again to harvest for another couple of months. So this is just a fun strategy that works out really, really well. Um, one thing that I will point out, in the winter time, you don't want to harvest when your plants are frozen, okay? Uh, you only want to harvest on sunny days. And we're going to talk about protection here in a minute and you'll understand a little bit more. But when, when your plants are frozen, if you harvest those leaves, they're going to thaw mushy. If you leave them on the plant and let them thaw on the plant, then they actually come back and, and, and do just fine. This, this picture that you can see here was a, a middle of the winter harvest, uh, and we harvested in the middle of the day, and you can see that the leaves are, are healthy and happy. So just make sure that you harvest on sunny days, okay? All right, so we have three different ways that we can uh, uh, Melissa, just by the way, I kind of paused there. And yes, this video is being recorded. So you can, if you missed the beginning, you can watch it over again. So yeah, it's definitely being recorded. Um, okay, so we've got three different ways that we can protect our spinach crop over the winter. Um, and the first one is row covers, then we have hoop houses, and we have cold frames, okay? So row covers, and here we're talking about the heavy fabric row covers. So uh, if you're looking for these, you're going to be shopping for ones that say they have frost protection of six to eight degrees, okay? These are heavy fabric row covers and they're meant to protect your crops from cold. In the winter, we are not worried about sunshine because there just isn't any sunshine. There's not enough sun to cause the plants to grow. And so instead, we're going to be protecting them with these heavy fabric row covers that are designed to protect crops in the wintertime. And, um, they will they'll help to protect and, and keep us going okay so these heavy fabric row covers come in great big pieces usually like six by ten or you can get big rows of them um, rolls of them sorry and and so look for those and and you know prices have gone up a little bit here lately but i would imagine that you can get you know two or three good sized pieces for fifteen to twenty dollars each um, if you live in zone eight Fabric row covers are all you're going to need to, to overwinter a, a, a winter crop of spinach. Um, and, and I'm thinking here of like my, my daughter. She lived for a while in, in Georgia. And um, they, you know, they had freezing temperatures, but it was a short period. It was only about 45 days. They never got down below, you know, 25, 20 degrees. Uh, and, and so fabric row covers is going to be plenty to protect the hardy spinach plants um, through the winter in those zones, okay? In zone 7, some years, fabric row covers might be enough. But we're kind of right on the edge of zone 6, zone 7, and, and you know, they wouldn't make it in our zone So um, with just row covers. So zone 7 you know, you might make it with just row covers, but I think a hoop house would probably be better. In zones three to six, you're going to use heavy fabric row covers as added protection for your crops, but they are not going to be enough to get your crops to survive through the winter unless you happen to just have a very mild winter, okay? All right, next protection is hoop houses. Um, so hoop houses are uh, a great little thing let me let me turn my picture off here so that you can see what I'm talking about this is one of our hoop houses and uh, that is snow coming down in the picture it, it kind of got digitized for some reason when I uploaded this picture but that's snow coming down there so um, hoop houses are just small structures that you can put over your beds um, temporary structures in zone 8 they're nice to have 
but not necessary. Um, you know, the having them can can kind of add to what you can grow, but but not really necessary. You can build them if you if you want. In zone seven, usually a hoop house is all you really need. Um, now you can do a cold frame if you want in zone seven, and you're going to be really happy with the results. But you can also get away with um, with just a hoop house. Zone six for some of the most hardy plants like spinach, kale, totsoy, the a hoop house is probably going to be okay. But um, you would probably be better moving on to a cold frame in in zone six. Then in zones three, four, and five, hoop houses are probably not going to be enough protection for you because you get so cold. Um, you know, it's, especially in January and February when things just really, really happen. Okay, so. Um, the other thing that you are going to be doing in the dead, dead of winter, so again here we're, we're talking December, January, and February, uh, you're probably inside a hoop house. You're going to be adding some of that fabric roll cover that we talked about before. You're going to be sticking that inside the, um, the hoop house as well to just give some added protection to it, okay? All right, and then let's talk about cold frames. And again, I'll turn myself off here so that you can see. This is a picture of, this is actually two of my cold frames together. And essentially what a cold frame is, <clears throat> it's the best protection that you're going to be able to offer to your plants. In a lot of cases, I think it's probably even better than a greenhouse just because they're so much less expensive. Um, but a cold frame is essentially a box, usually made out of wood, uh, with glass tops. Okay, So the tops can be made out of glass or plexiglass. Mine are made out of plexiglass. I chose that just because it's less likely to break and it's not as heavy as well. Um, but you can make them out of, you know, the tops could be old storm doors, they could be old windows, you could make like mine are, are frames that have plexiglass in them. But the idea here is that we have something that lets the sunlight through and the heat through, but also protects our crops. And making a cold frame and then using plastic is not going to be as effective because the, the insulation value of plastic, um, you know, like sheeting is not going to be as great as glass or plexiglass. So usually we'll make those tops out of some type of glass and you can use, you know, recycled doors, whatever. Um, these are really, really good for zones three, three through six, but even in a cold frame, which is going to give you the most protection in the dead of winter, we're going to want to put some additional protection in there with some fabric row covers. So um, that's kind of how we're going to protect these crops over the winter. Now, <clears throat> um, let's see here. While we kind of pause, let me just refresh because um, it looks like we're getting some questions coming in and we're getting pretty close to being done. Yeah, good. All right. So my wife, AJ, is, is recording her questions. And so she will we'll get to those here in just a bit. Um, other crops that you could grow this same way would be kale, Swiss chard, totsoy, which is an Asian green, and mosh. All of these should overwinter really well in most zones. Now, those of you that are in zone three, I feel for you. I, I know that it gets really, really cold there, and you may struggle with all but the hardiest of these plants. So maybe kale and Swiss chard and um, spinach w may overwinter for you. Uh, the biggest problem that you guys have is, is you never get warm enough. Um, you have to harvest when it's above 32 degrees in your cold frame, and that's going to be your biggest struggle. So you may end up having a month or so where you don't uh, harvest at all because it never gets warm enough inside, um, but then you'll have an early spring crop. So um, that's a good advantage, okay? All right, um, that is all that I have for the actual lesson. Um, so let me, I'm, I'm going to let AJ kind of get uh, some of your questions onto our sheet here, and I'm going to really quickly talk to you about this master class that we have um, happening uh, here in uh, the month of July. Okay, so I want to invite you guys to join me in the year round gardening master course. And this is a course that teaches you a whole bunch more about the things that we've been talking about today. Um, I'm going to go through 
All the different crops that can overwinter, I'm going to cover um, all the different types of protection. I, I actually show you how to build hoop houses and cold frames and, and we go through all of those. We're going to talk about fall gardening and spring gardening and winter gardening. Uh, the whole course combined is about five and a half hours. This is a course that we've been selling for uh, six years, seven years now. Um, started in 2015, I think it's the first year that, that we started selling this one. And um, really fun course that I think you're really going to enjoy. This is my favorite gardening topic to teach. I, I love this topic because it's so fun to, to grow outside of the traditional gardening season. And so there's actually about 30 different crops that you can grow during the winter time. We go through all of those. Uh, we have, uh, there's about five and a half hours worth of instruction. I don't expect you guys to tackle that all at once. And so we break it down into a weekly study guide schedule during the, the months of July and August. So starting on July 21st, I do a, a weekly Q&A session for everybody that participates. Um, we do it live on a Zoom call so that you guys can ask me questions. We also have a private Facebook group that goes along with it. Although you don't have to be on Facebook to, to be a part of this. The Facebook group is just kind of a, a perk. Um, we do all of the, the essential work in the class or on the Zoom calls. And so everybody should be able to have access to that, okay? All right, so um, this course is currently open. We only open it once a year, um, and it's open right now from July 5th through July 15th. Uh, so it closes next Friday. And normally the price is $69. Because you guys have been here and watched this fun uh, little workshop for us, I'm gonna give you 10 bucks off. So there's a link down in the description of this video that you can click on and join the course for just $59, okay? And if you join today, I'll also give you a free bonus course, and that is my, um, it's it's my uh, season, or I'm sorry, lost my thought there. It's my succession planting course. So this is a little mini course that I filmed that's about a half hour long uh, that talks about succession planting, and it goes along really well with this whole year-round gardening concept and how we can go from you know spring to summer to fall and, and even into winter with these succession plantings of crops. And that bonus course you get for free if you join today. So there's a link down in the description for you to click. Okay, enough selling. Uh, I, I always feel awkward doing the selling part of this. Uh, again, really quick, I just wanna thank our sponsors, Honest Seed Company and Smart Pots, who were very, very willing to give us, I mean, I, I said, hey, I'm doing these workshops, you guys wanna do some prizes? And they were like, absolutely. So. I put links to their websites down in the description of this video. Go check them out. If you haven't already gone and, and, and checked these two companies out, they are great. Honest Seed is all GMO free uh, and heirloom seeds. Smart Pots is a great uh, company. They make a whole bunch of different pots and different sizes and they're all fabric pots. They're really great to work with. So. Um, they were both willing to give us some prizes and uh, Honest Seed Company gave us three $25 gift certificates to their website and Smart Pots gave us two pots. So here's what I did. We had about 160 people who pre-registered for the course. I put all of those names into a um, random number generator and it spit out five winners for us. So here are the winners. Um, for the gift certificates, uh, we have Valerie Inhofer, Mary Mitchell and Theresa Ritz, 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 okay? Um, so congratulations to you guys. You guys won the $25 gift certificates. And then the Smart Pots go, the 15 gallon Smart Pot goes to Haiti Green and the five gallon Smart Pot goes to Michelle Lee. So congratulations to all five of our winners. Um, I will contact you guys via email to get the information that I need from you so that we can get these either shipped to you or send the, the coupon code to you for the for the Honest Seed Company, okay? All right, so congratulations. Um, and uh, we have more chances to win coming up too. Uh, we're gonna do some more workshops next week, three of them, and we'll have prizes for all of those as well. So um, in fact, I included a link for that and I'll talk about it again here, but we're gonna have next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're gonna do three more of these same type of um, workshops. So uh, we'll have those there. Okay. All right. So let's do some questions. Um, I'm seeing quite a few here, so we'll try and tackle them. Um, I like to try and keep these workshops to about 45 to 50 minutes. Um, 
and um, so we've got we're we're about a half hour in right now. So uh, it looks like you know we've got quite a few questions here. If you guys want to continue to um, ask those questions, uh, we'll we'll try and get to as many as we want. But I at the same time I want to honor your guys' time and not just keep going and going and going. So um, let's get started. Okay. So uh, first question is. Um, which spinaches should you use? Okay, so the the variety that I use for winter gardening is called Bloomingdale Long Standing. Okay, that is an heirloom variety that we have been using for about six or seven years for our winter gardening. I wanted to switch to an heirloom variety uh, just because I, I like you know open pollinated varieties and 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 like the the opportunity to occasionally save some seeds. Um, but there's also another variety, it's called Melody, uh, and that one is actually a hybrid, uh, which is fine, but that one is also very um, cold tolerant. So both of those I've had good experience with. Bloomingdale Longstanding and Melody are both really good ones, although spinach is very hardy one way or the other, so you probably you know, could, could use just about any variety that you want. A great place to look for varieties is Johnny Seeds they have some really good winter varieties there um, as well. Um, okay, uh, so yeah, there we go. Um, okay, um, instead of fabric roll covers, could I spray the foliage with garret juice? I don't know what garret juice is. I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Um, and can you use raised beds? Yes, you can. So, um, the, the only issue with raised beds is um, in the really cold zone. So like three and four, you may struggle a little bit because they're up off the ground, they freeze quicker and they freeze harder. Um, so you may struggle a bit, especially with root crops. So like beets and carrots and turnips, um, those are going to have a hard time in a raised bed in the wintertime just because the, the soil freezes. But I have in zone six, we have raised beds that we cover every winter and we're able to do kale and spinach and even sometimes lettuce. If it's a mild year, we'll have lettuce that lasts all the way through. So yes, raised beds are fine as long as they're in contact with the ground. If they're up off the ground and there's air circulation underneath, that's going to be problematic. Okay. Um, what about using cheesecloth? I'm assuming that question is related to keeping the pests off. And yes, the same idea. That, that would keep the pests off. If you can find a piece big enough of cheesecloth that's big enough, you could definitely use that as well. Um, although the fabric row covers and the bug nettings that are available are probably more durable than cheesecloth ultimately. So um, they would probably last you longer, even though cheesecloth may be a little bit cheaper. I know some people that, that use just like tulle as well, that you know, it's kind of that decorative thin material. The only issue with those is, is those are not really designed to be outside. And so the fabric row covers and the bug nettings are actually designed to be outside. They're UV protected. They're going to last longer um, than some of those, those less expensive options. So you may end up, you know, if you bought cheesecloth, you may end up replacing it every year, whereas a row cover may last you three or four years. Or like the heavy row covers are going to last for decades, literally. Um, all right. Um, Debbie is wondering if you're in the wrong class because you're in zone 9A. Um, so you are going to have a much easier time doing this kind of stuff in zone 9A because uh, you, you just don't have the cold freezing temperatures. I'm sure in 9A you probably do have some frost, but um, your planting dates are going to be much later, probably more like you know October um, is when you're going to be planting and you should be pretty easily be able to, to kind of maintain um, that. Um, can you grow spinach in zone 9? Yes, you can in the winter time. Um, so zone 9 is going to be really, really hot. That's usually people in Southern California, Arizona, so really South Texas, Florida, and, and that's the time for you to actually be growing spinach is the winter time because uh, that's, that's when it's cool enough to, for it to actually do well. Um, will plastic sheets work instead of row covers? Um, no. Uh, they, they will work to some extent. Uh, but they, they don't offer the same insulation value uh, when they're in contact with the plants. Now, if we're talking a, like a hoop house, yes, you can put plastic on the hoop houses, but 
overall the row covers are going to be uh, more insulating uh, for for your plants and but I definitely would not use plastic for pest protection um, you want you need air circulation and the the fabric row covers for pest protection are going to give you air circulation so if we're talking plastic for the um, for the pest protection no definitely not okay um, all right uh, Mary asks what about putting in a greenhouse where to start um, a geodesic dome etc you're in zone 4b 5a um, so yes everything that we talked about here you're going to be able to, to manage in a greenhouse the only issue with a greenhouse and the reason why I don't teach greenhouses in these courses is because they're so much more expensive and there's so much more work to managing them uh, than, than there is cold frames and hoop houses you know a, a hoop house you can build for $25 um, and you know whereas a you know a, a, a big greenhouse is going to be hundreds and possibly thousands of dollars so but you definitely can be overwintering crops in greenhouses um, as well um, they're just very expensive and so I, I don't teach them because I'm trying to keep it affordable if that makes sense okay all right um, do you have a certain brand or place to look for a good heavy row cover um, so there's a there's a brand called Agribond and um, it's available in several places I've seen it on several of the uh, like gardening websites um, I, I know I saw it on Johnny Seeds I think I saw it on um, Gardner's what is that uh, Gardner Supply um, and it's available on Amazon as well so it's called Agribond and uh, that is a, a good good brand that I use um, Claytonia yes Jeannie asks, is asking about Claytonia Claytonia is another good winter one that we actually talk about in the master course quite a bit um, any varieties better for and we talked about that one already um, I also grow these or can I also grow these in a greenhouse um, over the winter and the answer to that is yes and it looks like I skipped a couple here sorry I, I get moving along and, and go too quick um, how do you put circulation in a cold frame so uh, during the during the fall you are going to uh, you're, you're going to just prop those those lids open during the daytime so um, essentially a, a, a cold frame is going to increase the, the the inside temperatures are going to be during the day they're going to be about 30 degrees higher than the outside temperatures so if for example it's going to be 50 degrees uh, during the day uh, you your cold frame is going to be 80 degrees that's a little bit warm for spinach and so you probably should open the lid during the day um, so you can either just take a lid off they if you want to get high-tech about it they have uh, these mnemonic um, lifters that can lift your lid for you when it when it's, you set it for a certain temperature and it'll actually lift your lid up to, to ventilate um, those are about the last time I looked they were about $35 each um, so not something that I do but you know that that could be something if you wanted to automate it but essentially with a hoop house and with a cold frame to get air circulation when it's hotter or warmer you just you know you just crack the lids a little bit but during the dead of the winter you don't worry about it um, every, everything is cold and frozen inside and it warms up during the day enough that you can harvest and and there there's not a really con a big concern about air circulation uh, in a cold frame in a hoop house remember they're much smaller uh, total air volume is much smaller than than like a greenhouse would be um, okay uh, let's see um, okay Ruth we may get back to your powdery mildew question um, that's not really kind of on topic here um, and I know Ruth um, and so we'll, we'll we'll get there Ruth I may actually Ruth's a member of the gardening Academy I may actually go and answer your question in the gardening Academy for that one um, so Mary's asking she's already joined when will the succession course be available um, so everybody that wants the bonus course for the year-round gardening you have to you have to register by the end of the day today and then tomorrow morning I'll go in and enroll everybody that that made it by the deadline uh, in that succession planting course so it should be available over the weekend um, for those of you that want to know um, does year-round gardening pertain to those of you that do container gardening so 
It depends on where you live. Um, if you live in like zones four, five, six, containers freeze hard. And so you will, you will learn some stuff from year round gardening from the master course to help you extend your growing season. So, you know, instead of being done in October, you could be done in the middle of December, but the dead of winter containers don't do well because they freeze too hard and it's too hard to insulate them and, and things like that. And so there's just not enough soil volume in a container to keep it from freezing rock hard and that just kills everything. So it, it is a little bit tougher if you're a container grower. Um, in the colder zones, if you live like zone seven, eight, containers should be okay. All right. Um, when, uh, let's see, do you start the beds with seeds or transplants? Okay, good question. For spinach, kale, um, Swiss chard, tatsoi, seeds. Okay, so we're going to start those all by seeds. The, the only thing that I worry about in the fall, uh, starting by transplant, is the broccoli family. So broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, um, Brussels sprouts, kohlrabi, those I use transplants. Everything else I usually just do by seed, unless I don't have the space. If, you know, if I've got a space that's still occupied in the garden, that I'm going to be doing winter gardening in, I may start lettuce seedlings or spinach seedlings or something indoors and then transplant them out when the space clears out. But you can definitely start all of these directly by seed, okay? Um, okay, um, ban everything is saying spinach won't sprout in my aerial garden hydroponic grower. Um, I've never used one of those, and so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to help you on that. Um, you might try pre-sprouting them, uh, but again, I don't even know what growing medium those use. So uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't really help you on that. Um, why does spinach set, go to seed so quickly? Um, also, I didn't plant any seeds, but I have a full raised garden of spinach. <laughs> so you must have let some go to seed last year. Um, so spinach bolts with the heat. Uh, which is a nice thing about growing in the fall uh, because it doesn't bolt. I've never had any spinach bolt in the fall at all. It, now, it obviously will bolt next spring, but um, spinach bolts because it gets hot. And that's one of the big advantages of growing spinach in the, the fall is that um, it's, it's not hot and the, the, the daylight is going down. All of the triggers that tell the spinach to go to seed are not there. And so it lasts all winter long without bolting, which is, which is really, really cool. So it's usually though the, um, it's the heat that, that causes and, and the increasing daylight that causes them to, to bolt. Okay, um, Ruth is asking, can a metal raised bed be turned into a cold frame? Yes, absolutely, um, it definitely could. Uh, I, I question a little bit the, the insulating value of the metal. So you may, you may consider, you know, sticking some straw bales or something around just to kind of add a little insulation value because the metal is not going to protect from the cold as much as the wood would, if that makes sense. But beyond that, yeah, it should, should be great. Um, did I know in the 1800s they used oil Muslim um, to make cold frames? I did not. That's cool. I'd love to, to learn a little bit more about that, Jeannie. Send me an email. Um, I'd love to, to, to read up on that. Um, do you put a heat sink in the cold frames like a clay pot or a water bottle? Um, I've tried that a few times. It didn't make a difference. So one thing that we need to, to remember is we are planting early. So the whole idea here is, is we plant in you know eight weeks before our first frost so that the plants are to maturity by the time the cold weather comes along. And then we choose hardy crops. And so the heat sink, I, I did that. I tried some, some bottles of water. And I mean, it didn't hurt, but it didn't help. I, I, saw, I, I did it in one bed and not in another one. And it didn't seem to make a difference. So um, the heat sinks are usually in a, like a, a greenhouse are great big water containers. And so they, they, when water freezes, it puts off heat. Um, so the, the heat goes out and that's how the heat seeks help uh, is they, they put that heat off and you can't get big volumes of water in a cold frame. It's just, you know, they're, they're so small. Um, 
And yes, containers are okay in zone 9B, absolutely. Yeah, you won't have any problems in zone 9B because you're you're never gonna have a really hard, hard freeze, okay? Um, okay, let's see, I, I'm gonna, that's, AJ has, um, okay, here's another one. Jeannie, do spinach seeds need cold to germinate? No, they don't. Um, my spinach germinates just fine. Uh, in August when it's hot, you know, I mean, August will still have 100 degree days. Um, one thing that I have found that is a little bit helpful and it, and, it, and it covers two different things is I will cover my beds with that light fabric row cover and that seems to cut the heat down a little bit as well because it, it gives some shade to it. And, and that seems to help my germination. Since I've started, we, we, when we moved to the place we are now, uh, we, that we have a real problem with um, leaf miners. And uh, so I ha absolutely had to start covering my spinach. Otherwise we lose the entire bed to leaf miners. Um, and so that's one of the things that I noticed when I started covering those beds, even before the seeds came up, that I had better, more even germination. Uh, it works well with carrots too, beets, everything. So, uh, you know, that's, that's always really, really good, okay? Um, I do cover the seeds. Um, I, so, so you're you're gonna you're gonna cover them with not a lot, just like a, an eighth of an inch of, of soil is about all. Sorry, I got thrown off. Somebody's telling me I should get a haircut. Really? Hmm. Uh, radishes and snow peas don't favor heat either. That's that's true. Um, both radishes and snow peas will not overwinter. They they are not. Um, they're not hardy enough to overwinter, but they're great for fall. So you can definitely be planting those um, for fall, okay? All right, um, how do you amend the soil? So I amend my soil with compost. Uh, so every time I plant, I add about an inch of compost to my soil. In the fall, I will try and add a couple of inches uh, to the soil. So that's basically, that's and that's my fertilizer for the most part as well. So uh, it's not very often that I fertilize in my garden uh, because I just keep the soil in good shape using compost. And I try to grow my own, but it's really hard to keep up with my giant garden and, and still grow that much compost. Uh, grow, <laughs> you, you know what I mean, make that much com homemade compost, but I'm trying, so we'll see. Okay, um, that looks like, my friends, uh, about the end of the questions. Uh, we had a great group here, or we're over 100, almost all the way through. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, just a quick reminder that the special pricing on the year-round gardening master course ends on July 15th so you can get it for $59 and if you buy it today you get that free uh, succession planting course as well now just so that you guys know I am going to be doing more of these little um, uh, workshops so uh, this is number two of five and next week, I am going to be doing one on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So that's the 12th, 13th, and 14th of July, 2022. Each one of those will be at 2 o'clock. And um, we're going to cover the next one. We're going to cover crops that you can grow in fall and winter. We're going to go through uh, quite a few more of the crops. We're going to talk in particular about some of the base crops, the ones that really provide a lot of, of the you know, the bulk of, of what you're going to grow in fall and winter. And then we also will talk about timing uh, in another workshop. And then the workshop on Thursday will be on protection. So we'll talk about uh, more about hoop houses and cold frames. So uh, same kind of format that we have going on here. We'll do about uh, 20 minutes of instruction, give away some prizes, and then um, answer questions, okay? All right, so I think we'll call it quits. We're at just about 50 minutes, which is right where I wanted to land. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Please, again, um, if you like this, you're going to love the, the master course, the year-round gardening master course. Uh, it's a, a lot of fun and a good program. So uh, I think you guys will really enjoy it. So go click on that link down in the description and uh, go buy that and then if you want to register for the other workshops that we'll be doing next week, there's a link down there. Registering, pre-registering for them enters you for the prize drawing as well. So just click on that and we will get you entered. Okay? All right. Thanks, guys. This was fun and I appreciate all your questions. And uh, I think we'll call it there. All right.
Okay, everybody have a great weekend and we'll see you next Tuesday. Happy gardening, guys. Thanks.